Woo! Well, the nature boy, Ric Flair, and Dirty Dutch Mantel, good old Zeb Coulter, got into it this week with a little bit of an exchange that started with Dutch Mantel on his podcast, Storytime with Dutch, where he was talking about Ric Flair's last match. This has been something that he's been critical of. He has taken shots at Ric Flair's last match in the past as uh, just, you know, something that he probably shouldn't be doing, to be 100% honest. And this was in the context of Ric Flair bragging about how much money he made. When people say that he was, uh, you know, people criticizing his last match, Rick is like, well, I made a shit ton of money off of it, you know. So Dutch Mantel was asked about this, and Dutch Mantel does what he does naturally, tell the truth, just fucking, just speak from the heart on it. So this is what Dutch Mantel had to say about Ric Flair's last match. Check out this clip. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I was really, I was disappointed, and it was he ripped the fans off. And even he planned, and I've said this before, the layout of the match was wrong. Why didn't they let his son-in-law do the sell part and Rick make the comeback instead of him going in there and trying to sell and then winning the match? And he was sweating like a, a Russian racehorse. And <laughs> and I've even had uh, I've had people write me and said, I thought he was going to, you know, seriously, people thought he was going to die. And I think he passed out a time or two in there. Didn't he? Yep, doesn't even twice. remember it. He doesn't even remember it. So Ric Flair now is trying to leave a legacy, and he should have left it alone or changed a lot of things in that match because his legacy now is tarnished. I don't know. Ric Flair's full of shit, and always has been. Ric Flair is full of shit and always has been. That's so fucking funny. I love I love me some Zeb Coulter, man. Dutch man tells my guy. Uh, I've said it here on this show multiple times that if I was running a wrestling company and I wanted to build a booking team around me, Dutch Mantel is on my booking team. I think he's smart. I think he's honest. I think he gets hit. He gets the business, and he's been around the booking teams a long time too. He booked for Puerto Rico. He basically ran that fucking territory. Uh, so Dutch knows his shit. He's a smart guy. He booked TNA. You know what I'm saying? So uh, smart guy knows his shit. Never shy on his opinions. And I didn't know he had a beef with Ric Flair like that. Well, Ric Flair couldn't take this lane down. And look, I'm sure we're going to hear about it next week on his podcast, probably too. But he was not shy to respond on Twitter either. Let's take a look and see what he had to say over on the Twitter. We have Ric Flair at Ric Flair Nature Boy saying, Thank God they used the word veteran and didn't call you a legend. Just a miserable old wrestler trying to make a buck. And by the way, you never had a legacy to begin with. Woo! Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Sorry, the woo always makes me cough. Hits me in that spot. Look, I I didn't know they had that kind of heat, I guess. You know, Ric Flair's full of shit. Always has been. Ric Flair's a bitter guy. What does he call him? By the way, a miserable old wrestler trying to make a buck. Boy, if that ain't the pot calling the kettle black, ain't it? A miserable old wrestler trying to make a buck. That's Ric Flair. That's really, if you were to, to describe that, people would tell you Ric Flair. Uh, look, I don't fault Dutch for having a podcast trying to make a buck. What else are you going to do as an old-ass wrestler? Sit down and tell stories, and Dutch tells great stories. That's why his fucking podcast is called Storytime with Dutch Mantel. You sit around a fucking campfire, and you listen to Uncle Dutch tell stories about the wrestling business. It's fucking brilliant. Look, maybe I am a little biased. I, I, I've covered this for a long time here. Ric Flair has a long history of being a bitter, crabby, miserable fuck. 
He gets offended easy. He has thin skin. He takes shots at everybody uncalled for sometimes. He'll go off on a rant. Fucking, he'll be talking with Conrad, and Conrad will just fucking be just saying something, and Flair will be like, would you say Jim Hurd? Conrad's like, no, I didn't say Jim Hurd. He's like, oh, I thought you said Jim Hurd, because fucking Jim Hurd. Fuck that guy. <laughs> what a piece of shit he was. Nobody brought it up. What the fuck are you talking about? So that this kind of shit that Rick is very bitter. Very bitter. He loves to take his little shots. Uh, he did it just this week on his show again. I forgot who he was criticizing. Uh, it might have been Austin Theory. Uh, I think he went in on somebody else pretty hard, too. Rick just... Uh, I don't know where that mentality comes from. Look, I love a good shit talk once in a while. Like I, you know, I come from a rap background. I love a good beef, a good fucking... Uh, uh, a good diss track, you know what I mean? Like, taking shots back and forth can be fun, can be entertaining, and look, fuck, it's good for my show, look at this. We're talking about it, gives me something to talk about. Look, I'm entertained by it, but at the end of the day, like, what's in these fuckers' hearts when they're, like, look, Dutch, from what I can tell, and he has been overly critical of Ric Flair's last match. They've had multiple segments on his show Different angles approaching it in different ways, but he's been very critical of it. But a lot of people have. I don't know that he's picking on and look just by in in call a spade a spade by saying Ric Flair's full of shit and always has been. He is in no uncertain terms saying that he does not like Ric Flair. So clearly he's biased there. But it this doesn't look like he's a miserable old fuck trying to make a buck. He's not out here, let's bury this isn't the Ric Flair burial show to fucking make some money off of it and get clicks, brother brother. He's asked topical questions. Maybe this was teed up to get this particular reaction out of him, but he's just answering a question. I don't, Dutch doesn't strike me as a particularly vengeful or spiteful or miserable guy. He's probably a little bit miserable. You know, he's an old crotchety fucker. But he's just honest. Brutal honesty sometimes, you know. But I, I have the utmost respect for Dutch Mantell. And I can't say the same for Ric Flair. Sorry. Hot take here. Dutch Mantell, all the respect in the world. Ric Flair... I, I, I don't like Ric Flair. I really don't. I want to like Ric Flair. I respect Ric Flair, the wrestler. I respect his wrestling career. I respect his legacy. I don't respect Ric Flair as a man. I don't. I don't. I think he's he's a pretty horrible human being, to be honest with you. I think his perspectives are all out of whack. I think after almost dying and coming back, he should just be thankful to be alive and be happy and, and come from in, coming from a place of peace but he's coming from a place of being an elitist being above other people being better than other people putting other people down making fun of other people criticizing other people he talked on his recent show about how he used to dunk people's heads in toilets he's done it a couple times laughing about it still to this day or kind of like what kind of man is that? I know some of you are out there giggling and look at I mean, it would be funny, I'm sure, especially if the guy really deserved it. But what kind of human being at 70 some years old still gets a giggle about dunking multiple toilet people's heads in toilets? I don't know, man. I, I just think Ric Flair, he's he's a very thin skinned, salty, egotistical I mean, you've heard, I, I just went through it all. Uh, I, I, I know it sounds bad. I know Ric Flair has his fans. And I know people are going to criticize me for my opinion on Ric. But that's just how I see it. And though this started with Dutch and Ric is only responding and I get that. I still think Ric is out of line here. It, 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 it's the pot calling the kettle black. Even if what you're saying is true, have you looked in the fucking mirror? Have you heard yourself ever on any show? It's just, it's the perspective of, of it, I guess. R where Rick is coming from, where Dutch is coming from. D Dutch isn't out here to to bury Ric Flair necessarily. He's just not going to hold back when asked about Ric Flair because he doesn't like the guy. Just like I'm not holding back talking about Ric Flair right now, you know? 
Nobody asks me, of course, but it's my fucking show, and I pick the topic, and it's a thing that's going on, and the thing, and the thing, and the thing. So that's my thoughts on it. I don't know. I, what are your thoughts? You like this kind of shit? It's, it can be entertaining sometimes, right? I, I'd like to see what Rick has to say on his show. I wonder if he's going to leave this beer, if he's going to go hard on Dutch. I'm surprised that there's that much heat because they come from the same era. I would have thought they would have worked and been around each other. Um, but I, I just, I side with Dutch on this one, but that's just me. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next. Oh yeah, thanks for checking out the video, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like it if you liked it, yeah. And you can check out full episodes each and every Sunday right here on the channel. Ooh, yeah. Dig it.